one little slight screw up could be the difference of being Mr. Olympia or being third. And uh, are you trying to ask me that? Because I didn't say that. What you say between first and third? I'm saying that's a, that's a big. If you, you know, you're, you're Phil, you can take first, and next year you take third. That's slow. Oh, okay, Phil. That's right. So <laughs> Phil will be third next year. <laughs> Guys, since Arita said that. People don't understand that we get paid to work out. We get paid to compete. This is our office. This is our nine to five. This is our money maker. This is how we make our living. Yeah. Come on, you know. <laughs> I love pre contest. Me too. I can't stand me. I, I function so much better when I'm dieting. Me too. I like feel I'm better. Like, when I'm dieting, I'm like, and everything I need to be done. I'm like, I do this, 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 this. When I'm not dieting, I'm like, ah. Like I'm saying, I'm actually eating a lot this time. Like normally, all season, I eat like one meal and just eat all junk. This time, I told myself, I'm going to do like, you know, I'm going to eat meal, food, and then what, like, I'm, I'm, I got my muffins with me, so now I have my meal and has muffins. <laughs> This you guy got me into no muffins, bro. He got me into the muffins. I'm like, I went to McDonald's and he's like, yo, let me get some muffins. So I went to go get my burgers and I'm like, I bought a whole bunch of muffins. I said, let me get one for myself. Let me see what this muffin's about. And it tastes good. I was like, wow, they taste pretty good. So, you That's know, I've been doing muffins or cookies after my workout. That's a Cedo special right there. That's yeah. a muffin, man. A muffin goes the wrong way. Anybody else here? Uh, you know, I came to the gym first in 2009. Uh, became was starting to become a top amateur, and uh, I got the opportunity for Steve Weinberger, who's always uh, a head judge at the pro shows at the national level, to come look at me and assess my physique, and that's a huge honor. Big phones are for big guys. I'm a little guy. Hey, what's up, kid? It's a huge honor. So I started coming up for him to look at me a few weeks before nationals, and. And uh, he would let me know whether I was on track, off track. And um, every time that he's looked at me and said, I'm, I'm good, I always do really well in the shows. Uh, the one time he said I was off, well, <laughs> I tried to make up time, but it didn't quite work out well. So, um, you know, if you're going to come see him, you've got to do your homework, make sure you're in shape, make sure you're looking the part, because he will let you know, honestly, and <laughs> might get your feelings hurt. But uh, he's always uh, really sincere in his... In his um, his mentorship has been a huge part of my success. Are you to train today? Back. Are oh, they training back too right now? Sean. Sean yeah. guy. Human body is an amazing, amazing machine, you know, and, and it's pretty cool to see what you can do with it, with nutrition, with exercising, you know, with just staying focused and really pushing yourself to a limit. Your body will always adapt. And that the hard part about bodybuilding, it's not, you don't have a, a coach or a team pushing you. It's a self-induced torture. Nobody's telling you to do it. If I don't want to compete, I don't have to compete. I can, do, I can sit on my ass and, and eat burgers all day. One of the things that usually sets the, the average bodybuilder apart from the, the person who's going to exceed their goals, um, win championships, be on the pro level is, is that ability to push yourself when you're mentally telling yourself I can't do anymore to push yourself beyond that when your body feels like you're going to shut down to mentally be strong enough to keep going and you got to have something inside you that, that pushes you that, that creates the desire and for me it's my kids you know I want to uh, be able to show them that if you work hard enough if you believe in yourself enough that anything can be accomplished I'm one of the youngest guys in the 212 division um, I think there's maybe like three, two, two, three guys younger than me. I'm only 32, you know, and Sean's, Sean's older, but Sean's just, you know, pretty much stepping in his prime of, uh, of being a competitor. And he's going to give, he's going to give Phil a run for his money. So, um, you know, that being said. Well said. <laughs> That's my spokesperson. <laughs> That's my PR guy. He don't want to say it, I'll say it. I was done after Prague for a couple weeks, so I was going to do two days eating whatever I wanted. He was out there eating with me. In Prague? In Prague. KFC? Yes. They yes. walked back in yes. at like 2 in the morning, no lie, him and Dexter yes. looked like second trimester. Their stomachs, and I was like, <laughs> yeah. I'm and, like what? but he was harder. 
the next day in Italy than he was the damn day before. Yeah, he's a freak. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's amazing. Amazing. yeah he's Age has not caught him at all. No. Not at all. No. He's like the ageless wonder. So everything's just so... Yeah, he's put together. Just put bellies. together beautifully. It is. Yeah. That's the reason I used to... <laughs> like, I'm just, I'm just here to be in the present box. <laughs> Yo, he almost... He, oh, you were there. He almost knocked out William. I was like, what? William, uh, William Bonner Bonnet? got in his face really? in Italy. Ooh. What? Yeah. Oh. Why? Why? Yeah, what happened? We were. Um, he said he said Dex was like busting his chops in the back, like, yeah, like no, joking around. It was. The first call it was me, uh, me, Roly, and Dennis, and Dex. They didn't call Dex around. So William started nagging at Dex, was like, you know, Rolly's going to beat you this time, Rolly's going to beat you, like, you washed up, you're no good. And Dex was like, wait, <laughs> he kept going, wait, we're going to see who was going to be in the top three. So I guess he left early before the show was over. We were sitting at the table and he walked up and he's going at Dexter. I told you, I told you Rolly was going to beat you. And Dex says, what are you talking about? He goes, I told you Rolly's going to beat you. Dexter said, why don't you talk to Rolly? Because Rolly was sitting at the other table. And Rolly was like, nah, Dexter beat me. And he just went off like, you know, I paid my dues. If the right judges were judging, I'd beat you any day of the week. And I'm like, you know, for me, like, I, I want to be a great bodybuilder, no doubt about it. And that's why I work, I'm trying to work towards it. But I have my business. I have the other stuff going on for me. I think when all you got is this. You you your you're not play, you, you, it, it, it's your whole life. stress. Yeah, so if he goes to a show and wins $2,500, he's screwed. Because he's like, if he, especially if he was banking on winning a lot more, you know, I mean, you, you should have, you should be able to have your finances set and everything, but it's not always the case. It, it's, if everything's on the line when you're doing the show and you don't, it doesn't come out right, you know, I mean. Just the, only, the, only, the only people that should, the only people that can rely on that are like guys like Sean, Phil, like guys that are at the top. You know, we're all Olympians. And um, you know everybody worked very hard to get there, to be on stage at that moment, and you know in competition any given day anybody could win. You know it just seemed as if the focus was just on you know Kai and Phil. And I'm like, hey, you know there, you know 17 other guys, 15 other guys up here that's competing. I mean, I, you know, as guy said, I didn't go there just you know just to be a number, whether it's a press conference or anything. And, you know, to see that everything was just surrounded, I understand there's a rivalry, but there's a rivalry between everyone. I said, at the end of the day, when the focus is just on two people, it's just kind of like, what about the rest of us? You know, it's the slats already, one and two already taken. You know? I'm very thankful to get number number three, but at the same to get third, but at the same time, you know, my goal going in was to go, hey, I want to be you know, third. When you're a competitor in any sport, you want it. You want to win. Nobody, <laughs> nobody goes to the Super Bowl and remembers the, the guys that lost. You, go, you want to go to the Super Bowl to win. I don't want to go to the Olympia to, to take second, third, fourth. I, you know, I've been to the Olympia four times as competing as a pro for five years. It was good to be there, but uh, I didn't like the taste left in my mouth. So 2015 is going to be a little better. Bev was training for the uh, for the Papa Nine movie, and it was at this other gym that uh, I happened to be uh, a, a member there temporarily. And Bev walked in. Well, actually, before she even walked in, I walked in, uh, new at this sport, and I walked in. And I, as soon as you walk in, there's a squat racks, and I saw this person squatting a lot of weight. I said, wow, you know, that's impressive. I said, who is that? Only th the person only had a, uh, like a pair of shorts on with a t-shirt. I said, that's a very muscular guy. I said, you know, I'm always impressed about how the ability of how guys how to lift heavy weights with proper form. So, and I was impressed. I was watching the person do this to squat. The weights are racked. The person turns around and it's a girl. <laughs> That was my first initial uh, view of Bev where she was at her peak, that way ahead of her game. That installed in me and inspired me also to say, wow, you know, that is such an inspirational view of a person achieving such an accomplishment.